Hello, happy Tuesday, or whatever day this may be that you're watching. My name is Sarah, coming to you from Northeast Ohio. And I don't know if you can notice, but we are back in my craft room. Uh, construction, redo, remodel, DIY, whatever you want to call it, uh, is well underway in here. I talked about um, my excitement on the last episode. Behind me, you'll see two open bookcases. That whole wall is going to become storage for my yarn and for other things. I have some fabric and things as well that need a home. Um, so I have those two up and then my other two are going to be delivered tomorrow. And they're from the same collection as these. Uh, the other two just have some um, door storage, I guess you could call it, uh, along the bottom with um, some open shelves on the top. Um, so I just I picked them up or ordered them, I guess I should say, from Target. Um, so easy to find and they were super easy to put together. Didn't take me very long. I did it by myself and um, they seem sturdy. They appear sturdy. I didn't have any issues with anything. So I'm really, really excited to have that wall just be user friendly, I hope, and, and create a lot of good storage for myself. So that's exciting. And I got a big old area rug for in here that ties together my the blue on my walls with a couple other things in here. I got a super new comfy desk chair. I mean, I am really just like on the up and up in here. <laughs> it's just nice. It's nice to to have to have a great space, a space that I want to come down and spend time in. And will hopefully once everything's organized be much less stressful than what it has been before because it is usually just chaos in here. So um, I've been spending uh, time as I can in here going through things, organizing things. I do have some cabinets in here as well. Um, just hoeing out because as a fellow crafter, I'm sure you have the same issues where you're afraid to get rid of something because you literally never know when you might need it. But I just, I don't, I just don't want all this stuff anymore. I would rather donate it um, or give it to somebody else that will make immediate use out of it than me just holding on to it for who knows how long. So um, with that, I'm also going to be going through a lot of my yarn and donating it. There is a local group here, um, local to me group that uh, crafts, knits, crochets, whatever, um, blankets for the elderly, like in senior communities and um, assisted living and things like that. So I'm going to do a very good go through of my yarn and um, hopefully donate a whole bunch to them. So I'm super excited about that as well because again I would just rather it go somewhere that somebody will use it than just hanging out here. Um, so those are those plans. I don't I don't think I have too much more to purchase for in this room to finish it off. I do eventually need to get a curtain. I have a small window um, over here to my left. I do have a small, or I need a curtain for that, but I want to wait and see how everything kind of like fits and looks and vibes, if you will, before I may make a decision on that. Um, so that's all that excitement. And then I also did get real fancy and got a tripod with a ring light. So like, hey glow. <laughs> Um, so I don't know. I've always just kind of like mucked around, like angling my camera and leveraging it against some books and some other things. And I don't know. I just, just, I just went for it. I found one on Amazon on sale and I just did it. And it's, um, it's awesome. It's fun. I like it. I think, um, I don't ever have very good lighting anywhere in my house really. So it's just kind of nice to have like the light as well. So hopefully you notice a difference and if not then whatever that's okay too. So um, I think that's all the craft room stuff. The oh no I forgot to share. I got the worst news today. The worst news. I had to go to my annual eye exam and I have noticed some vision changes and knew that I would probably need to be getting glasses. I was correct. But not only do I need glasses, I need bifocals. Bifocals. 
like old people. Bye, folks. I was devastated. I really was. Like, <laughs> I was really bumming out. <sighs> so, but what are you going to do? Aging is graceful and beautiful and all those things that people say. But uh, I was really bummed. I, I did, I have had a long life of glasses and contacts. Um, I've worn them since fifth grade, but about 12, 12 yeah, almost 12 years ago, I got LASIK and um, haven't needed them then for that long, which if you're like on the fence about getting LASIK, just do it. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's just so worth it. It's like the best thing you could do for yourself. And when I did get it done, I was in my 30s and, or no, I was in my 20s. And they told me, they said, you will have vision changes, um, you know, nearing 40. And here I am turning 40 at the end of the year. I just, ugh, I mean, bifocals. Like, ugh. it's like, not only do I like knit, which is stereotypically an old lady hobby, not so much recently, but in years past. So not only do I knit, now I need bifocals and then obviously like massive gray hairs. It's hap it's all happening too fast. So I'm dyeing my hair tonight because I can't, I can only handle so much <laughs> at a time. And like, no, I can't, I can't, I can't, I couldn't even believe it. Anyway, I know that's nonsense and it's not anything I should be complaining about, but I just, I was just got off guard with that news. Anyway, onto the knitting. How about that? Let's talk about that. I first want to talk about something so incredibly exciting that came in the mail today. I have been waiting for weeks, maybe months. I can't remember when she first announced the release of this, but guess what came today? I'm so excited. I, if you do not know Summer Lee's designs, which I don't know like who wouldn't, I guess, but, um, she's a sock pattern designer and I have knit several of her patterns. I also still have several patterns that I purchased that I need to knit, but I, she announced this and I immediately pre-ordered it. Like I could not wait. And I did not even realize the plethora of information that she was going to be putting in this book. I've been um, also watching her podcast lately that she just restarted and she's been like giving little snippets of this book through um, some of them and she just goes over a bunch of different heels, how to do toe up, like just recipes galore, patterns galore. I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm just so excited to have this in my stash. Like this is something I will very much use so frequently. I'm so excited for her. She's literally just like the cutest person in the world. I'm so excited to have this. I like can't even wait. I can't even wait to start. I actually next up, um, well, I have um, socks that I'm working on right now, but after that, I'm going to make some socks for my grandma. So I, I think I'm going to, I'm going to try one of these patterns from in here because why not? So I'm so I'm really excited about that. So many exciting things. Um, and then I do only have one finished object. I showed these the last time I was very, very far on them. I think I might've only had the heel to do, I think, but I finished, um, my son's socks. This is uh, nomadic yarns, colorway, self-striping. Um, it's amazing yarn. This is the second, um, pair I've knit with her yarn and it's glorious to work with. It's just so soft and it's just great. So I did um, 56 stitches. I did just a tube with uh, toes on the end. And then I did afterthought heels. I was only using a 50 gram skein. So I wanted to make sure that I used, that I would have enough to do both socks, if that makes sense. Cause I'm still not really good at measuring and gauging yarn versus how much I have left. So I just did that. And then my afterthought heels, which super funny. I didn't gauge my um, extra that I used for the heel and toe, so I ran out. And I had to use some of the um, dark orange from the uh, skein to finish off the heel right there. So silly. It's literally just like a couple rows. 
So anyway, he doesn't care though. He's eight and he's just happy to have these. So, um, so on, on to gift to him. So that's my only finished object, which is weird because I feel like I've been knitting a ton, but, um, oh, that's all I have to show for finished. And then a couple whips. Uh, we'll start with the one I showed last week. As soon as I get this untangled. Oh my golly. Um, so I am still going strong with my mega mini scarf by Julianne Amos. And I'm using the um, Arenaceous Fibers had a Valentine advent. I don't know am I allowed to call it an advent if it's not Christmas. But like a, you know, a mini skein February 1st through the 14th. So I'm doing the mega mini blank um, scarf with that. I just, I knew I wanted something simple um, and, and this was it. And it's a free pattern by the way also. So, um, so these are the colors that I have added in thus far. And I knew very, very specifically that I just wanted a diagonal scarf as well. So this is where I was last week. A little kitty cat stitch marker. So I've just added in this and then I'm almost done adding this color as well. Um, two, three, four, five. So this is day five. Today's February 13th. So I'm a little behind, but there's no, there's no time frame. There's no deadline for me at all. Um, oh yeah, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. If you celebrate, happy early Valentine's Day. That's exciting. So, uh, just chugging along at this. I have not even opened up, um, past February 6th because, um, I just figured when I was ready for it, I will just open it up then and it'll be a fun surprise. So that's where I am with that. I'm loving the colors. I did get a, the fingering weight collection and it does have Stellina. Oh, could you even see that? It does have Stellina in it. Can you, I guess like, I don't know. It doesn't really do it justice, but there, the sparkles in this are like, are just, they're, they're fantastic. I love it. I've only worked with Stellina yarn one other time. Um, and it was a gift knit, so I didn't even get to like reap the joy of the sparkle. But so I'm excited to have that. And it should be a really nice transitional piece between all the seasons that we have here in Ohio. So if only I could knit it faster. Um, so I have that going. And then still my year long temperature blanket is going strong. I've been staying very up to date with that. I have not kept the ends woven in like I had hoped. I do need to just sit down and make myself do that one evening because that'll be a nightmare if I wait till the end of the year to do that. I, I would never do it. Actually, like if I waited that long, I know I would never do it. Um, I also restarted my gray space sweater, which is a funnel neck pullover by Tiff Nealon. I had started this, um, I don't remember, sometime in January and I could not find my small cable for my um, needles. So I just decided to do a longer one and do magic loop. But the way the pattern is, I was just having, um, like tightness issues, I guess, like at both ends of, you know, like where your cables are and where your needles are. I was just, it just wasn't, I couldn't get the gauge right. So I, after I had gotten really frustrated with it and kind of set it down, I had found, I had found my smaller, uh, cable. So I knew that I would be able to restart it and I did. Um, I'm not sure what made me pick this back up because I have like a million sweaters that I could be doing, but um, I don't know, whatever. So anyway, so I have the funnel neck done and then this little bump right here is kind of where you start the increases for like the body. See, can you picture it? Isn't it so cute? Um, so this is a two tonal sweater so I'm doing dark gray on the top light gray on the bottom and then the colors are just intertwined through like a couple rows of I don't know if you call it color work because it's some quick changes I, I guess it's color work but just a small little section of that and I've never done color work in a garment before so I kind of thought that would be a good um like beginner friendly learning your tension kind of pattern so this is well underway and then I'm using um, Wool of the Andes for this in a couple different grays, or two grays. So that's going strong. I put got one, one ball or whatever you call it in this now. 
So ready to attach and put a new one and move on with that. So that's that guy. And then I started after I finished my sun socks, I just started a pair of vanilla socks for easy on the go knitting. Um, and this is how those are working up thus far. These are going to be for me. So it's a 64 stitch count. And then I haven't decided what kind of heel I'm going to do. I'm really digging the afterthought heel lately. So I'll probably do that or, or maybe a forethought heel. But um, I think I'm going to do that. I'm a little over heel flap and gusset for right now. I just, I don't know. It's like what all my socks are. So I'm going to do one of those two heels on this. And then I'm using Lion Brand Sockies in the color Aviation. So that is that. And then what else do I have going on? Um, I think that might be it. You may be asking yourself, you may not be asking yourself about the baby knit that I was making. I think it's called the clean and simple or simple and, simple and clean dress. Uh, it's a free pattern put out by Pearl Soho. I am literally done. I just need to bind off. And then there's some like um, edging um, very easy detail along the arms and the neck band. Um, and I don't have any good reason why it's not done because I could have it done in like 30 minutes. I don't know. Do you ever do that? Like, I feel like I'm so close to finishing a project and it's a gift knit, which makes me a little nervous. And it's a baby knit, which I'm not sure if I've ever made a baby knit besides a baby blanket, which doesn't really count. I'm like, I'm nervous it's going to fit. I'm nervous if they're going to like it. So it's like I just haven't finished it because once it's finished, then you like have to gift it. I don't know. I do that a lot with projects. Like I'm afraid of the finish or something like that. So I do really need to finish that. I'd love to give give that to, to the baby sooner than later. Maybe I'll finish that for next video. And then... Yeah, I don't know. I don't have a good reason why I haven't finished it. Just I tucked it away and moved on and well, I don't know. Anyway, um, the only other thing I wanted to chat quick about, I guess, is it seems like everybody talks about like what they're watching, what they're reading and all of that. I used to be a much more avid reader than I am now. I think it's mostly probably because if I have downtime, I'm knitting um, and I am not good. I, I can read a little bit like while I'm knitting but only if it's something that's like a basic stock in it or something like that so I don't do it often I just haven't mastered the skill I guess so I do uh, more audiobooks is what I enjoy doing because that it's just no-brainer you can just pop it on while you're knitting um, or I'm or I'll be watching TV one of the two while I'm knitting so um, what I'm watching um, it kind of bumps me out because every there's a lot of people that are like, oh, my husband and I are watching this or we're watching this or we're super into this right now. My husband is like the worst person to try to watch TV or a movie with. Like he just is. He's very particular with what he likes. And literally the pretty much the only thing that we can agree on is The Office. We are both huge fans of The Office. So usually at night, we will be able to spend a little bit of time together. We usually just like, like crawl into bed and watch TV for a little bit. And it's just always the office, which is fine. Like it's nice to have like a little like lighthearted laugh before bed. And you know, you know what's coming. There's no surprises, all that kind of stuff. But I'm like, we've, we have tried countless shows and he just is like, yeah, uh, it was fine. Never like, that oh, was amazing. Let's watch another one. So I have resigned to giving up on really ever watching tv or movies with him so I just find my own stuff to watch it just works out better that way so I personally have been watching um on Netflix the series called fool me once I'm only on episode I think four but it's like got me hooked like if I could pull an all-nighter and watch it I totally would it's like really good so I might try to maybe watch a little bit more of that tonight, actually. Um, but that's been super, super, super good. Other than that, I usually, I like to watch documentaries and things too. But we'll see. I have a bunch of stuff saved on my Netflix, like, list or whatever it's called. So I'm going to just slowly start working through all that. But 
yeah so fool me once is about all i'm watching and then audiobooks lately i um i just finished my third one as of late like i think like this year i guess like i started in january i think um the first one i listened to was called it girl by ruth ware i really i'm a huge fan of ruth ware i've read several of her books um it girl was good it wasn't um you know, it didn't like super wow me or anything, but it was like a great listen to, would still recommend. It's a thriller, mystery, murder, myst it's a thriller mystery kind of, I guess you would call it, which is what the I think all of our books are. Um, but that was really good. And then after that, um, I just needed like a palate cleanser. So I, Summer Lee from her podcast had recommended the, um, the book, um, romantic comedy by Curtis Stiffenfeld. I don't remember the last name, but Curtis something. And that book was phenomenal. It was based off of Saturday Night Live and it was like totally like a character. And I think she even said this, but it, the character literally reminded me of Tina Fey from 30 Rock. If you watch that show, it was just, it was a great book. It was a really, really great book. I loved it. Um, it, it was, and I love books that, that tie everything up at the end that don't leave you wondering or guessing or like making up your own ending. Like I'm not here for books like that. You're the writer. You got paid to write this book. Like tell me how it ends. I don't want to use my own imagination. So that tied everything up nicely. It was a really, really great read. So if you need a palate cleanser, I totally recommend that. And then I ended up um, just finishing this morning, actually, a book called The Quiet Place, A Quiet Life, A Quiet Life by Ethan Joella. Um, that was a great listen to as well. I, I would say it is a more of a palate cleanser. Again, it's just a feel good book about three different people whose stories like, you know, somehow intertwine and, um, it was just a really good book. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, again, it tied everything up at the end. It, it was, it was great. It was really, really good. So, um, those are the three I've listened to. And then I'm physically reading on my Kindle, a book called, uh, The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda. That is more of a thriller. I don't want to say too much about it because I don't remember what is given away in the synopsis. Um, but it's just about a group of people who, suffered the same trauma and, um, get together year after year to be together. I don't know. But anyway, it's good. It's, um, it's a mystery. It's a thriller. It's a whatever you want to call that genre. Um, but that's good as well. I'm just, it's taking me longer to get through because it's on my Kindle. So I've been trying to take that like to work with me to read when I'm on lunch break, um, and things like that. Cause again, if I'm, if I have downtime, I'm knitting. And I just, like I said already, I have not, I really have not mastered knitting and reading. So, <coughs> so that's where I am with books. I'm trying to get through this one because the girls at work have convinced me to start reading the, what's that one that everybody's like obsessed with right now? Um, the court, the thorn and rose, courts of thorns and rose at court of you know what I'm talking about, the Thorns and Roses series. So they have convinced me to try reading it. I've never, I don't think I've ever really read genre like that. So I don't know if I like it or not. And I mean, I, I feel like I can like, I can like get through one book at least to see if I like it. So they're all super obsessed with it. They're excited. I agreed to, you know, to read it. I'm not sure if I'm going to do an audiobook on that or um, they have like the series circulating around through them in like a hand like an actual book because <laughs> um, it seems like audio and Kindle are like on super, super huge wait lists. So we'll see where I end up when I'm done with what I have going. So that's the potential next read, I guess. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably it. I took notes. So I'm just like glancing over at my notes. I actually took notes today. <laughs> I'm not sure how much I stayed on task, but I did. Um, I think that that's it. Um, I'll wrap it up here. I really hope to be back next Tuesday. There shouldn't be a reason why I'm not. Hopefully I'll have some more finished objects by then. And, um, I hope you guys have a really great week.